guys, so today we're going to take a little look at a neat little game um, produced by Bandai. It is Magical Totokun on the Famicom system. This um, let's see, series actually has quite a few games on the system. It has two on the, um, see the Famicom, one on the Super Famicom, two on the Game Boy, one on the Genesis, and one on the Game Gear that I'm aware of. Um, it originated as a Shonen Jump series from the mid-80s to the early 90s. It was about 21 volumes long. It was a neat little um, kind of a magical boy comedy series. Lots of like uh, kind of like the little boy raunchy humor you see in a lot of the early mangas. It's a, a neat little series. It later came out as an anime. Um, I haven't found any fan translations of it but you can see some raw videos on YouTube and I'll put a little click, uh, link below. Um, just keep in mind that the humor is really kind of kind of raunchy and like lots of like like boob and butt, like butt jokes and stuff so that's your warrant to you so let's actually go and take a look at the actual gameplay so let's take a look alright we're gonna start off with just taking a look at the opening screen I just wanted to point out that I decided to put in the scan lines um, this game has a fairly soft color palette lots of pastels and when you're looking at large areas of that that can make your eye feel kind of tired so by putting in the scan lines it's a little less stressful for long gameplay so depending on how you feel about that you can have the scan lines in or out personally preferred them in so when we take a look at the game the overworld is a lot like Super Mario 3 you have the little levels and you move around it and what I found is like when you start the level you can pick a power up and you talk to like the main guy character and then you go straight into the level the levels are pretty short. The average time to go through them is about a minute and a half, but you're given about three minutes to go through it all. Uh, your mobs aren't particularly exciting. You got mice, birds, uh, rocket snails that shoot at you at rocket speed and uh, a lot of cheap dust from those guys. But once you know the overall layout of the level, you can beat it fairly quick. It's the initial going through the level and trial and error that's tricky and can be frustrating. My first time playing through it, I had um, difficulty using the jump in and the, his main weapon, his tongue, getting the timing just right on those two. But once um, I came back at it the next day, I was able to go through world, the zone one pretty easy, and then the next two zones um, pretty quick. The game is actually kind of hard for su as such a short like level game, but once you get used to it and, as I said, know the layout, you can get through it pretty quick. At the end of each level you have the option to buy items from a little item shop. The currency in this game is grilled octopus balls that are a pretty popular uh, treat in Japan. So what you can do is you can buy additional lives and power-ups. The little frog power-up is my favorite. That gives you um, a chance to get hit once and then you get the superstar effect in Mario where you can hit uh, enemies for a short amount of time and knock them off the screen. Um, after you buy those items you get little scratch cards where you can win additional power-ups and extra lives. You match three, you get that item. So when you go back to the world map, there are a few little bonus games that you can get. One where you um, hit A and you try to match up icons and win additional lives. And then one where you go to a little stand that has uh, octopus balls being shot out of the sky and you try to catch them with your tongue to get additional currency and levels up. Another thing you'll notice on the overworld map is the boss characters, which are sitting there along with characters that you'll interact with that either give you power-ups or give you information about who you need to beat up. So when you're going around, you'll go on to the boss and it starts up the fight. You don't get to use the power-ups, but in general, once you get used to how the boss acts, it takes three hits and then they're gone. There is a few different mobs and it does take a little trial and error to get through it, but you just keep trying at it and you'll get them. So after playing this game on and off, uh, my conclusion is for a later Famicom game it really brings nothing new to the table other than the Shonen Jump characters themselves. It's kind of fun for pick up and play and put down. It is a frustrating game at times. But with the power-ups and just a little practice, it's not too bad. This game is actually currently pretty cheap at the time of this video. If you get creative with the spelling, you can pick it up for about a dollar. And depending on how many items you get, it would be like an additional $2 or $1 for shipping. So for a game that's about 3 bucks total, 
It's worth um, checking out, especially if you're into Japanese import games and you have the means to play Famicom games. I hope that this little look at it was useful. And if you have been playing uh, Magical Tarakun too, let me know. And we'll see you guys next time.